I'm super excited to be here today on the very first day of our most awaited Polaris Talks, the master session with our super tutors. Let me introduce Dr. Ryan Fernandez, Medical Director at Dr. Polaris. A very warm welcome to you, sir. And also to Dr. Sanjit Bachpe, Chief Academic Officer at Dr. Polaris. Sir, good evening and how are you both doing? Good evening, Dr. Aishwarya. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I am doing very well. How are you? I am also doing great. And what about uh, Sanjit, sir? Sir, are you there? Yeah, good evening, Aishwarya. Good evening to all of you. And very evening, excited to be doing? a part of this. Really, we are also very excited. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, all ready to go? Yeah, sure. We can start. So, before we start, I would just um, uh, like to welcome everybody else in the audience also. So, um, happy that you guys have joined us today in the first session. Uh, so, now I don't want to keep you guys boring. I'll uh, give it to the masters themselves, our dear super tutors. Over to you, uh, Sanjit sir and Ryan sir. Thank you, Dr. Aishwarya, for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, like uh, Dr. Aishwarya said, I'm Dr. Ryan Fernandez. Associate Professor uh, in the Department of General Surgery. And I also happen to be the Medical Director at Dr. Polaris, the MBBS Learning App. It feels so good to interact with each one of you today, bright, young, first year students, eager-eyed students. And that is what Polaris Talks is going to be about, interactions between you, first year students, and us, that is Dr. Sanjit and me. This is not going to be a classroom and we don't want a classroom atmosphere. This is all about being a part of your journey throughout your MBBS from the first day until the last when you finish your MBBS. We want to use this platform to discuss every aspect of MBBS. It may be something related to your day-to-day -day stress that you face during your MBBS journey. It can be something to do with your exams where you want to know how to deal with exams, how to cope up with the stress of exams. And we also want to be a part of the journey after you finish your MBBS, when you want to discuss, if you want to talk about what to do after MBBS, how to go about it. We want to be a part of that journey from day one onwards. So basically we don't want to be like a coaching class who show you some medical videos and then forget about you. We want to hold your hands just like what we wanted when we were the uh, eager-eyed first-year students like you. Back when I was a student, when I just joined the medical college, the first um, uh, in instruction given to me by the staff was that if you study, you will pass. If you don't study, you will fail. So that was the advice given to us. I don't need anybody to come and give me that advice. I myself know that if I don't study, I will not pass. If I study, I will pass. So that is what we want to nurture in you. We want to build up that confidence in you. And it is not going to happen in one day. It is not going to happen in a month. It is a slow process. And during this process from your first day of first year MBBS to your last day when you're finishing your internship, you will face a number of challenges. Let's make no mistake about it. It's not going to be a rosy throughout this journey. And that is where we want to come in and mentor you throughout this journey to say that it is okay. It is fine. We are with you and we will help you through it. Along with this, we also want to tell you that we will give you this platform to come up and shine. We, want, we will have monthly uh, activities for the students. Obviously, if Dr. Sanchez and me talk throughout the year, you're going to get bored at some point or the other. And then just like you might once in a while plan of, on bunking your classes, you might bunk these webinars as well. So we want you to come here. We will give you topics where you will speak on, where it will be like a competition and attractive prizes will be given. So this will not only test your uh, knowledge that you're acquiring. We want to constantly assess what are you doing in your first uh, week of uh, MBBS or in your first month of MBBS, first six months of MBBS. And also along with that, we want to nurture your teaching abilities by coming here and talking about the topic, 
by uh, displaying a video of a lecture topic that you have taken, you are going to instill that leadership and teaching skills in you, which is also a very essential part of an MBBS curriculum. So with this, I would like to bring in Dr. Sanchit, who is also the chief medical officer, uh, a chief academic officer uh, at Dr. Polaris, the MBBS learning app. Dr. Sanchit, would you like to say anything? Yeah, good evening to all of you. Uh, today, I just feel like a first year old kid who just joined medical school. So it brings me back to the days when I entered medical school, just as you guys are now. You must have been going through a lot because I can really understand there is a huge emotional hurricane inside whenever you enter a medical school. And I just want to tell you that I want to tell you about my story. When I entered into a medical school, I was much driven by TV shows. I used to watch Dr. House, Scrubs, Grey's Anatomy. I used to be so much intrigued by the surgeons. I used to be so much intrigued by the work they are doing that that drive me towards this profession and I thought I can make a difference by being in it. Now, being in first year, right in the foundation year, it is just like, you know, the first steps of becoming a doctor. And these steps are the most important because what happens is we never realize when these five years end. You will, it, will go in a, it will go in just quickly. You won't even realize when you will enter in your final years or when you will enter internship. And then finally, you will get back to these years and then you will remember that, okay, I should have done this previously or I should have done that previously. So this thought always remains inside a student. Now, when I was a student, my professor used to tell me a story. And this is the same story I want to instill in everyone's mind, especially the young medicals who have joined. So this is a story about a Chinese bamboo shoot. Okay. And what we regard is, especially all the first year students, they are just the seeds of that, that Chinese bamboo shoot. Now, what happens is when you take a seed of this particular shoot and sow it inside the soil, you have to nurture it every day with water, with sunlight, with so many things. You have to give love. But for the next five and a half years, not even a single sprout that comes out of this shoot. So everybody is wondering when this shoot will come out, when the plant will grow. But for five and a half years, there is nothing. You just water it, you give sunlight and do everything to it. After five and a half years, this Chinese shoot comes out. And as soon as, as it comes out, it almost grows to 90 feet in the next six weeks. Now, what is the essence here? The essence here is that for the first five and a half years, nobody cares about what is going to happen for the next coming life. You have to just build your foundations very strong so that your coming life is going to be hale and hearty. So what you do today is going to have a huge impact in the next 40 years of life. Always remember that. And this is what the time is. So don't get away from long working hours. Don't shy away from hard work. This is one of the best fields and the most noble fields that you have entered. Feel proud to be a doctor every day because nobody else around you will be that. So Ryan, sir, I was wondering that when we joined as, you know, medical students and when these young medicals are joining now into medical schools all over India, what is the major difference in education that has changed from our time to now? The first thing that I remember when I joined WBS exactly 20 years ago was that I was intimidated looking at that hospital when I entered first. So when I entered, uh, seeing this huge building and seeing uh, everybody in white coat, till then, you always run away from hospitals, you run away from doctors. You don't, uh, let's be honest, nobody wants to go to a doctor. When do you go to a doctor? When you're sick, you never want to be sick. Your aim in life is not to fall sick. But when you fall sick, there has to be somebody to look after you. So that is where we come in. So the first idea of me joining the hospital, entering the hospital was seeing a huge campus and getting intimidated. The second thing was there was nobody to actually tell us what is going to happen. We have joined MBBS. Um, we have joined MBBS. We know we want to become doctors. But we don't know what is a hospital. 
we don't know what is a medical college and uh, i think that was the that is the first memory of mine that i remember somebody ushered us to the classroom and the next one year we never entered the hospital wondering then then we are we wondering we came to do mbbs we have not even held that stethoscope like you said uh, tv shows we have never held a step uh, on our uh, around our necks we have never entered the hospital ever and uh, we uh, call ourselves mbbs students future doctors so that is my first memory of uh, joining first year what has changed now and what this batch will forever be called from today onwards from their first day onwards is cbme batch and that is what has changed from my time to now that is early clinical exposure in a hospital for medical students where they are exposed exposed to mbbs they are exposed to the hospital in their very first year when they are studying anatomy physiology and biochemistry right sir so i feel uh, there is a kind of a culture that has grown in first years what i feel and where medical education has gone totally wrong so what is happening in today is we have pre planned notions when we enter inside the first year what we are going to become in future as well as how our life is going to be or what we are aspiring it is already decided and the second thing is that there is a kind of a coaching culture that has built up in the society where things are absolutely haphazard because if i take the current scenario doctors are produced as neat qualifying students like those doctors who qualify neat are regarded as you know the that is the main aim of anyone to become a doctor and even our studies go according to that so maybe the first year or the second year are not that much important for neat point of view so maybe that gets neglected and maybe the final year because it has got the maximum subjects which carry the weightage in neat so they have got a huge you know uh, a syllabus to cover so people usually give a give time to that but what i'm trying to tell is the essence of medical education is right from first year till your final year everything is connected and that is thanks to cbme curriculum as well as nmc guidelines currently that we are having a big change towards medical education and that what also we will discuss in detail in the coming webinars as to what exactly this is going to be what exactly the curriculum is going to be and how it has to be dealt but the foundation still remains important the foundation remains the soul of mbbs suppose if i am in a hospital until date what happens is people don't come to me saying that you know i have suppose this problem of ent and please give me a medicine they will come to me with very specific vague terms and we need to communicate them with those vague that yes you will be fine now if i have a knowledge of everything then definitely i am a good doctor i'll be able to convince them but if i am solely concentrated towards my field only e and nt i will never be able to see the medicine aspect of it the surgical aspect of it or any other fields as in particular so i feel everything is connected nowadays rather than the streamlined thought and what we bring in through dr bularis is that we are not focusing to train you or become doctors just for a particular branch or just to qualify neat we are not producing that and neither we are producing machines we want you to enjoy this we want you to grow with it to involve as well as evolve with it so that you have an all round development being a doctor where communications are important even achievements are important and at the same time failures are also important because if you don't fail you'll never learn in this field right and i think that is what ryan sir uh, uh, i feel and uh, if you think ryan sir do you think that medical education today or rather the students today should they have a kind of a total a holistic learning or rather they should only focus upon certain topics and go in like topic 1 2 3 4 or they should jump to 3 and 4 because they are more important so how did they should go in this particular learning in first year this is uh, i think dr sanchit one of the very very important questions that you have asked because this is a debate that has uh, started i think it started a few years ago so 
if you decide that you want to become a surgeon, do you just concentrate on those subjects that are related to the field that you're going to choose? No, you have to, like you said, have a holistic approach without knowing physiology, without knowing biochemistry, you cannot progress further. Without knowing anatomy, you cannot progress further. So my advice would be for these young, budding first year students, concentrate on your first year subjects make your base strong and then slowly whatever field you choose in these three subjects are going to help you overcome and help you add on to whatever knowledge that you're going to gain in your second year third year and final year also you brought up a uh, very important point regarding the coaching culture now what happens is the students these days from their first year itself they are more bothered about mcqs rather than looking at the medical education and that is where today I, along with you, want to tell the students that look at the hospital and medical college as a whole. Remember that your hospital has an OPD where patients will be seen. There is a ward where the patients will be admitted. There is an ICU where critical care patients are looked after. There is a lab where blood and other investigations are sent. There is a blood bank where blood when required is uh, asked for. Go to these places in your hospital. Uh, there are students who at the end of five and a half years don't even know where is the blood bank in their own hospital. They don't know where is their lab. Go to these places from your first year MBBS itself and just see, you don't have to go there and uh, intrude in their jobs. Uh, nobody is going to ask you to uh, go and withdraw blood in first year MBBS. But go and visit these places. These are the places that you are going to be working in future. At the same time, your medical college has a number of departments from anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. Once you explore the entire first year uh, part of your building, go and see where the ophthalmology department is in the hospital. Go and see where the pharmacology department of second year is. So my advice is explore this. This is what CBME, that is competency-based medical education, wants you to do. They want you to go have a holistic approach so that at the end of five and a half years, you know each and everything about your course, that is your MBBS course. So Dr. Sanjit, here I would like to bring in an important point that you brought up about the fact uh, when you joined MBBS, you thought about uh, the, you were influenced by the uh, TV shows. So the important question I would like to ask you is reels versus reality. So most of these students, just like you, were, uh, you had an impression through TV shows regarding MBBS and medical education. They too have um, uh, similar ideas now. They would have come here watching House, Grey's Anatomy, and uh, many other Hindi medical shows, which I'm not aware of. And uh, now that you have finished your course as a medical student, as a postgraduate, as a specialization in your field, what do you think is this real versus reality? Is it uh, all rosy and uh, how it is shown on Grey's Anatomy or is it uh, different? Right. That's the most interesting part. I think real versus reality. Nothing is make dreamy here. Okay. <laughs> When I joined, uh, especially in a surgical branch, because I belong to a surgical branch, talk about MBBS. Uh, Dr. Sanjit, I think your voice is breaking. Uh, can you check uh, your... Can Dr. Aishwarya confirm? Is it only for me or uh, for... Um, uh, hi, sir. Sir, it's not yet audible. Uh, can you just unmute, unmute yourself and try talking again? I think it's yeah. on mute. Yeah, yeah. Now it's better. Yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Yes, you are. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. 
Uh, sir, we are very sorry. Uh, the speech is getting cut. Maybe I think it's a Bluetooth issue. If you can disconnect and then try Bye -bye. again. So if you can speak uh, a little yeah, bit, I can just think. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. So coming to reels versus reality, uh, when I joined medical college, I was very, very much intrigued about these medical shows and I always wanted to be a part of the surgical department specifically. And when I joined, actually, there is nothing flurry there. I thought it's all about fun and games. You go there, you will be entering. And, you know, there was one thing when I all, which I always had in mind. When I'll become a surgeon, surgeons have a pecu peculiar kind of a walk that as soon as you come out of the OT, there's a kind of an attitude on your face and people will be after you. And I was very, very intrigued about it. You, uh, there will be so many patients around me and people will be asking and what has happened. All these things don't happen. In reality, sadly, you don't have such kind of romances going on also inside OTs. It's kind of a very strict environment which we follow. Not calling it strict. Doctors are supposed to be disciplined. And what I feel is that one of the major things that is going wrong these days in medical colleges is also about discipline. Because what I've seen, that change has come now. Because people think that it is the other side, but sadly, they have to build the other side in order to be there. So if you are a doctor, first, you need to know that there are, there are tons of responsibilities over your shoulders. Now, let me tell you some facts. If I'm talking only about India, there is, according to WHO, the need of a doctor is to serve one person or one doctor to 1,000 people. But there is so much of dearth of medical education that currently the consensus says that only one doctor is serving around a lakh population. Now, one person to one lakh is a huge responsibility, not just treating them, but you have a responsibility. See, treating by medicines is something else, but treating psychologically is something else. You need to make them fit. You need to have a well-being. You, know, you, you need to explain them that they are fine. Now, one lakh people are a lot on your shoulders. So now imagine that how difficult this branch is and at the same time, how noble this branch is. Now coming to the real part. So definitely the real part depends on you. How flurry you can make it also depends upon you. But definitely it is not as flurry as you see in TV shows. Most of the things don't happen like that. Because when you enter into a district or a government hospital or let's say a private hospital setting, you will be posted in two different zones. So there is something called as a medical college. At the other side, there is something called as a medical hospital where your education is attached to. These two work in tandem for any particular uh, student. So what exactly you have in a medical college is as soon as you enter a medical college, you will have all your theory lectures there. You will be taught all the theoretical points there in the medical college. You'll have your classes there. But then after that, you will have a segment of the day where they will clinically, where, where they will tell you to go for a clinical rotation, which will be in the hospital. So there you will be posted in a particular department and your rosters will soon be out and you will be getting different departments. You'll be going there. You'll be seeing patients with the consultants who are sitting. One thing I would advise every one of you as well as the medical students, please observe. It's not about doing all this. Suppose I am becoming a surgeon. If I don't observe well, I will never be able to perform. Because if you observe, observation is one scale which grains that thought inside your brain and you will always remember it. You'll never forget it. And then after that, you can do any possible thing. Suppose if I say I'm a surgeon and if I want to do a surgery, surgery is the easiest to do if I have done my observations correctly because I know what is going to come next. Ryan, sir, do you feel the same? And do you, and do you yes. feel that this kind of, you know, the first year observation learning as well as the integrated learning right from first year will help them get into final year much easily? Absolutely. And which is why even though CBME is so difficult to execute as a staff, because now earlier the onus was all on the student, they had to learn by themselves, but CBME has made it such that the staff has to prepare a lot to integrate all these subjects when they're teaching the students. 
I still advocate and I support CBME because of this uh, whole concept of uh, studying everything in total and making the students understand the subjects right from first year. Whereas when we were there, we were studying anatomy, uh, physiology and biochemistry in first year without knowing why we were studying it because we never had the cl uh, clinical correlation which is happening now. So with this, I think the last two points that uh, we, uh, Dr. Sanchit and me want to inculcate for these two, uh, for our budding first years is that financial aspect. Don't, don't judge or don't aim uh, for a Mercedes right now when you're first year as your goal. Aim to treat patients in a humane way and then whatever financial aspects of that, uh, th that goals that you have will slowly come. It is not going to happen in one or two days, in uh, one or two years. If you start aiming for uh, materialistic things, you are going to definitely compromise on the type of service that you're going to provide, the uh, kind of care that you're going to provide, the unnecessary, unnecessary investigations, unnecessary surgeries, all that come into play, which we will discuss in subsequent webinars. So my advice, Dr. Sanchit, and my advice to you is don't think about uh, what you want in future in terms of your financial aspects. Finance is important. There is no way that nobody can say uh, money is not important. The only person who says money is not important who has, is the one who has a lot of money. So worry, money is not important. So money is important, but for that, work hard now. Money will come automatically. By the time you reach your final year MBBS, your engineering friends will already say that, oh, we've started earning this much. My pay package is this much. When you will be earning stipend of around 3,000, 4,000. Doesn't matter. Remember that as you uh, grow older, your earning as a doctor is just going to slowly increase. Remember, you're a doctor. You're a self-employed uh, professional. You can earn by yourself. You don't need to depend on anyone. You can earn up to 70, 75, as long as you're fit enough to practice. Unlike other fields, you can earn. So don't think about the financial aspect. Now that you've taken first year MBBS, you are going to become a doctor by working hard. And just by that virtue, you're going to be financially stable, as simple as that. So don't think of the money aspect now. The second thing that we want to inculcate in you is that, again, we, Dr. Sanchit and me will reinforce the part to say that we are here throughout your journey of MBBS. You can approach us through Dr. Polaris for anything. And we are not talking here about surgery, ENT, ophthalmology. We are talking as MBBS has a holistic point of view where you can talk to us about uh, any difficulties that you're having throughout your MBBS, any stress, any exam related, any other, um, any other uh, problems that you're facing. And we will be there through Dr. Polaris throughout your journey. What do you say, Dr. Sanchez? Yeah, very rightly said about the financial aspect. I think everybody, you know, has that ingrained thought that, you know, and everybody outside feels doctors earn a lot, but it's a huge journey. It's just a single step every day that you need to take your own sweet time to settle down. There is no hush. There is no hurry. Everything will happen. A doctor never sleeps without money. I'm telling you that. You will get if you deserve it. And there is a thin bar. And that is what I want to tell everyone. You know, there's a line. And in when you're doing, when you're becoming doctors, both the ends of, you're standing on both the ends. If your treatment works, you are a good doctor. If your treatment doesn't work, you are a bad doctor. Now your learning and education all depends upon whether you will become a good doctor or you won't. There is nothing called as an average doctor. And all of this, comes with a price, definitely with a lot of hard work, with a lot of commitment, with a lot of passion, and at the same time, failures too. So definitely all around you, people will be getting married, people will be earning, it will take time. And I think my even my colleagues did that. They all got settled and I was the last one to settle down. And everybody was telling me that, when are you going to get settled and when are you going to finally earn? It takes time. But once you will escalate, there is no turning back. Because Rome was not built in a day. You have to build your own dreams day by day and 
I am telling you by by the end of the day, even Tata Ambani is going to come only to a doctor to get treated. They won't go to an engineer. They won't go to an MBA personnel. So you will be getting all type of VIP patients by the end of the day if you are good at your work. So just focus on being good. Just focus on your dreams because your actions will speak, should speak louder than your words, and make your dreams bigger than your fears. So this is what you should learn from this, right? And uh, Ryan sir, do you want to? Make any concluding remarks for these wonderful young medicos out here? Yes, I think we have said enough, uh, Dr. Sanjit. Um, uh, by now, uh, this is our first webinar. I hope that uh, uh, we keep seeing them, and uh, we'll anyways be there for them throughout their journey. And um, if they want to ask us anything, I think this would be the right time if Dr. Aishwarya can uh, take over. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ryan and Dr. Sanjit. I must say that it was such a pleasure listening to you both. And I'm very sure that our dear students here also felt the same. And uh, I would just like to quote what uh, Dr. Ryan was saying initially. This is definitely something which I wished to quote when I was a first year student. Something like a guide, a mentor, or maybe a hand to hold on when I was not feeling good to move forward. And of course, uh, like what Sanjit sir said, you know, the nourishment for the bamboo shoot in me. That was something like, you know, which I always wanted to, or I, I always longed for. And I'm sure every first year student would be looking forward for something like this, being there in the first few days of their uh, med school. So now, uh, guys, I'll not keep, keep, keep you guys up more into this. It's Q&A time right now. So I request you to raise your hands um, as you have a question to uh, move forward. So um, over to you guys. Anybody with any questions? Come on, guys. I hope they're not raising their hands by themselves there in their own. We would love to have your participation and we want questions to come because I know there is a lot of dilemma inside a first year's mind. And uh, we would love to answer your questions at the same time. And remember that uh, we have a lot more topics. I think the schedule of the topics will be shared by Dr. Aishwarya and her team for the coming uh, uh, webinars for the Polaris talk. So we'll be uh, addressing each and every aspect from textbooks to refer, from how to deal with stress, uh, all these things. So yes, I can see some hands up. Yeah, uh, so uh, thank you, sir. We have Vinod today with a question. Hi, Vinod. I think Hello. Jinoj should unmute himself. Uh, Jinoj, can you hear me? Hello? Um, hello, can you hear me? Can you just uh, put a comment if you can hear me? Like, uh, what is the issue? Are you unable to unmute yourself? can just uh, put it on the chat box. Hi, Vinod. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Good evening. Uh, Vinod, you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Hi, Vinod. If you can uh, shoot your question. Yeah, sure. Which textbooks, MBBS textbook, we should prefer for the asset fresher? We should prefer. For we the have studies? we have a we have a segment for this. Uh, this is not the only thing. Uh, this is not the only webinar for the first year orientations that we are going to have. We are, in the subsequent webinars, we are going to give you the whole list of textbooks as well as we will also give you the way in which how to read and how to approach these particular subjects. So that will be covered in the webinars to come. Yeah, sure. this, is just, this is just an introduction to your first years. This is a welcome to you. And don't think us as your professors or as your uh, college teachers. You can be as frank as you can and you can be as open as to whatever you want to ask. Because we are as your friends and uh, you can go ahead and ask anything, whatever you wish to. Textbooks we'll cover in uh, subsequent webinars. Okay, thank you, sir.
Yeah. Thank you so much, Jinoj, uh, for the question, and thank you, Dr. Sanjit. Uh, and we have more questions coming up. Uh, yes, um, Abhilash. Hi, Abhilash. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Am I Hi. Audible? Good evening. Yeah. Yes, evening. you are audible. Please shoot uh, your question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, see, uh, I don't know how relevant this is, but like you know, uh, see, daily we do have a a, a very tight schedule in terms of the subjects that are covered so how do you recommend do we do the revision on a daily basis or is it like you know on a weekly basis that this you know you had your practical experience in studying this so what would be more convenient abhilash I, this is an excellent question i think this is one doubt every mbbs student has when they join first year mbbs i'm so happy that you asked this question because the way you study for your 11th and 12th is not going to work when you study your MBBS. My first advice to you is the day a topic is taken, read it on that day itself. It's been taken, it is fresh in your mind. And uh, when you go through a standard textbook, which we will be discussing, what is a standard textbook, what uh, re to refer. And then you go through videos like Dr. Polaris videos. It just ingrains the topic in your mind. The other habit that you should do, like you said, it is not easy. Uh, it's not as if you're going to study only one topic of anatomy in one day. There'll be physiology, there'll be biochemistry, there'll be practical uh, sessions in the afternoon. So it is not easy. But you start this right now from the first day itself. It is going to help you enormously. After a week, when there is some free time, go through the topic that was taken one week ago. It becomes a revision day itself. The moment you start keeping topics, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday's topics, I read on Thursday, it is not going to work out. Because by Thursday, so many topics would have accumulated, you just can't go to the revision and can't go back to the topics. You start missing out on reading the topic. And then by the time, you know, first uh, two months are over, your first session is coming up and it's all a huge mess. So my first advice today, when you're joining your first year MBBS, is read what is taught on that day itself and that is going to help you go a long way okay yeah i would just add here how what i did when i joined mbbs because it was very difficult in coping start with easy things okay. don't jump into the most difficult topics of your curriculum so start with easy easy things try understanding it will build up a lot of confidence inside you and if you ask me make notes Notes are something which are very solid. And see, notes are something which every student has his own way. So I have my own set of notes. Ryan sir will have his own. So these are just shortcuts to help you memorize. Some people put on stick-ons. Some people mark pages. There are different ways to remember things. But in particularly in MBBS, the curriculum is a little volatile. Until and unless you reach final year where you actually connect that actually what happened in first year. And now I'm finally connecting it to the final year. Now, luckily being CBME, you are getting that, that you're right away into what you are seeing is what you're reading. But before that, we never used to get that. So try seeing as much as you can, because these visual cues will help you, you know, learn and ingrain that thought a lot. Draw as many diagrams as you can, because diagrammatic learning in MBBS is something that makes it very easy. So if you can learn the whole topic, that's what I used to do. I used to make the whole topic on a single diagram. And then when I used to revise, I just used to look at that diagram. Now that helps in two points. One, it helps you revise faster. And the second is it will get you more marks. It's a smart way of learning. It's a smart way of presentation. So you will get better with your own ways of learning day by day. So I think if you keep on having these kind of small, small topic revisions weekly, don't overstress yourself. And that is what we have also told you. Don't overburden yourself. It's a long way to go. Maybe you have used all your engine oil right in the first 10 kilometers. Then on the 15th kilometer, you'll again be stressed and you'll lose the fight. So when you actually need it, you have to be slow and steady. Take your time. If there's no hush in reading the whole chapter. If you don't understand it, go again. If you again don't understand it, go again. And even if you don't understand, then you ask. So there are multiple ways of doing things. And I think you can make it simpler day by day. And you will get better with it. So don't worry. You cannot be the best doctor on the day one. You will take your own sweet time. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Yes, Matthew. I think Matthew wants to ask a question. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Hi, Matthew. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm actually from Kerala. So uh, recently, uh, like many instances are happening here. Like uh, many doctors are like, uh, like patients are actually attacking doctors uh, like after operation and all such. Recently, it's something happened. I read in news. So as a pressure, like uh, seeing these kind of news every day. So so. Uh, Shall we worried about that, like in future, what will happen? Uh, Matthew, um, you just finished your 11th and 12th, and probably when you uh, joined MBBS, that is where your focus would have come to these incidents. And uh, you must have uh, thought of it recently. Let me tell you that this has been happening since a long time now. We have faced it. We have faced it as PGs. We probably at some point might face it in future in our practice as well. Uh, there is a way to deal with all of this. And that will come only uh, as time goes. And that is one of the important points. I'm, again, I'm very happy that you all are coming up with these questions. And this is something we will help you deal with. How to deal with stress, how to deal with uh, patient bystanders who are violent, all of this doesn't uh, uh, come in one or two days. And Dr. Sanchit and me will make sure that we will talk about this and help you deal with this. I will not uh, uh, lie to you. It is happening. And at some point, you will face a violent bystander. It is how you tackle them and how you deal with them uh, that will help you come out of it. Uh, very genuine concern, but don't worry. Uh, I will remember this point of yours and I will see that we discuss about this in a separate webinar. Okay. Communication skill. Uh, that's what Ryan sir is actually telling. That, yes. uh, that one thing that you need to develop with time is communication skill. That cannot come in the first day. How to deal with people. Because psychologically, the person who is in front of you is having a different psychology. He's under stress. Some patient is having some trouble that may be his own family member or maybe a relative. And you are at a separate position where you are working 36 to 48 hours and you are having your own psychological stress. So at the same time, how will you communicate? How will you actually tell them? That is going to come with time and that is why we have these activities also in our app. So we are going to come up with these activities for you where you develop that communication skill, where we are going to inculcate that particular quality inside you. And even how to counter that stress if you're standing in front of a person who has a lot of things going in his mind. So it all depends upon person to person. And it all, you know, with it, it'll come with time. And uh, even in if you have time, then you should also inculcate some martial arts skills also, if you have time. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Ryan and Dr. Sanjit. And thank you, Matthew, for the question. So, is there anybody else who has a query to be addressed? So, so in that case, uh, sirs, can we wind up then? Yes, yes, yeah. I should. Yeah. So, um, I believe what you do today can improve all of your tomorrows, and uh, so let it be a great start for all the budding uh, doctors out there. And uh, with that, we can call it a day. So guys, keep tuned to many more amazing sessions like this uh, from Polaris Talks. Uh, see you very soon in the next session that is in the 6th of this month on the Tuesday. Happy learning, guys. And a very nice day. Thank you so much uh, for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you.